All right, welcome everyone to this Thursday night's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. And let me tell you something, we're going to take you out on the water tonight, not by film, not by feature film, but hey, we, we always have this. Every year that we've done this show, we have tried to, two weeks prior to uh, Safe Boating Week, we asked the Coast Guard Auxiliary to come in and just, just help us with some of these little things. We got new boaters out there. We got new people getting on the water, and there's a lot of things you need to know. So let's wind down and introduce our guest to you today. This is Bill Weeks. Bill is with the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary Flotilla Number Eleven Four. Eleven Four. All right, and, and I'm going to tell you, he's he's out here. He is not a, a guy that's going to sit out here and write you a ticket. He's mm. not here for that. He's not here to collect your money. He's not here to krill clerk check you. He's <laughs> not here to see how many fish you got in the live well. He is here <laughs> to make sure that you take your family out and that you have the proper safety equipment to go out there and have a great day on the water and then come safely back. That's what he's out there for. Yeah, and, and Bill, thank you so much for being on the show. You're so welcome. And, and we've been doing this a long time. Mm -hmm. Every yeah, two yeah. two weeks before Safe Boating Week, we always bring you out here. You or Harry yeah, or, Phil, uh, or Phil, in all no. of them. We even had the ladies, and, and I found That's out Rosemary. <laughs> she got her license to do the the, the She's a a, a captain, uh, yeah. one of the main people on the river now. And that's yeah. when she came on the show. She wasn't yet, but she said she was going to be, and she did it. And she's one of our uh, only commercial fishing vessel inspectors. That's right. That's right, and she does an awesome oh, job. Yeah. Right beside you, Bill Tyler, they just saw you over there, and Bill Tyler is a great, great friend of ours. He is a dentist, uh, but he's also, he loves to be out on the water. I, I know that for a fact. I've seen his pleasure boat. Uh, we had to work on it a little bit. We worked on it a little bit. And we got him up and running uh, a couple of summers ago, so I know he loves to be out there on the water and he loves to carry his family out there. And so this is going to be a show mainly to make sure, get your little pen and pad out so you can make a checklist of what you need to be checking uh, before you ever make mm -hmm. it out there on the water. Yeah. And Bill, we're going to, Bill Weeks, yes. we're going to start off with you, <laughs> Officer Bill. Uh, okay. What is some of the things that, that's primary that you think that ought to be at the top of the list now? What does somebody need to be doing? Doing. Well, there's four safe practices. And as simple as get a free vessel safety check. Right. The Coast Guard Auxiliary or the you know, uh, Power Squadron. Take a boating safety class. Right. Wear your life jacket and never operate a boat under the influence. That's exactly okay. right. That's, those four those things. Those four things. Will if probably you can get do you those home. four, those will get you home. Yep. Now, he said, let's go with the first one. Okay. Get your boat uh, to a safety yes. check station. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all don't write tickets no. or anything like that. But I do want to point out one <laughs> other thing, right. too. Uh, they have these safety check stations. Where do you, are you going to have certain places you're going to be this year? Uh, yes, and I don't have the schedule. We've had two so far, okay. and they've been miserably rained on. Right. So there wasn't many customers. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure which one's the next one. But, it'll but be I know it's some of the retail area. stores. Mm -hmm. Some of the retail stores you guys set up, and you'll have the Coast Guard Auxiliary sign, so don't run from it. No. Go to it. Right. It's, it's not an enforcement. If you see us out there, come to us. We're not going to do anything that's going to get you in trouble. It'll keep you out of trouble. It'll keep you out of trouble. Yeah. And, and the great thing is, Bill, I, I don't know if you knew this, but if you get inspected and you pass the inspection, you get a sticker, you can also get a reduced rate on your insurance with that, with that sticker. And that, and with the boating safety class. We'll and get, with the boating we'll safety class. A, a so it'll save you a little bit there, too. So. Mm -hmm. You guys are not there to hurt anybody. You're there yeah. to help everybody. That's right. And so uh, we got the safety check-in stations, um, uh, stuff like that. Now, this boater safety course, where can they take? They can take those. Uh, they're having several at the Tracker Marine in Hendersonville. Right. They mm -hmm. sponsor a class for us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the one at West Marine coming up soon. It's not one of ours, but it is a class. It, it is a class. It is right. a class. I think the Power Squadrons are doing it. Mm -hmm. And and in these classes, it is double. It's twofold. First, we have the boating safety program. We teach you the equipment you need for the boat, how to operate it safely, rules of the road, help you navigate through. 
Secondly, we also um, sponsor for the state requirement for those born after 1989 who need an operator. That's right. So before they can even operate one. So they go to your TWRA licensing mm -hmm. uh, places. You buy the $10 ticket, bring that to us. They get the exam. We send the paperwork in. You'll get your certificate if they pass. About how long does that take, Bill? Uh, you know? I, th I think it could be a week. Okay. I'm not sure how long. It Once depends. you take the course, and of course you've already bought the permit, yeah, and, and you, you take the course, you'll get your certificate in about a week, right? I think. I'm not sure. I but you get a right. validation right then and there, oh, and okay. you can go right out. You can go right then and right go then. vote. You okay. will have a temporary validation that you okay. take, you passed your course. Because that was a question a lot mm -hmm. of people have been bringing up to me. Uh, it is January 1st, 1989. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to have voter education before you can even operate a vessel on the water. And that is a powered vessel. Not only now, you have to understand, powered by anything. Mm -hmm. It is paddle, wind, current, or motorized. So that's what they mean by powered uh, vessel. So uh, you got to have that. So anybody born after January 1st, 1989, you must have it before you become behind the steering wheel of or the so captain of that vessel. Yeah, <laughs> so, might have a tiller. Might have a tiller. That's <laughs> yeah. right. That's exactly right. Well, Bill Taylor, uh, on the other hand, Bill, uh, you and I, we've been grandfathered into this. We don't they have to take these <laughs> courses. But I tell you what, Bill, uh, with all the information, and you and I could afford to, to uh, take a reduction on our insurance. It, 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 you know, and this course is how long, Bill, is this course? Uh, six to eight hours on the short course. Yeah, so we could take the course, you know, it's and an become afternoon. a it's better voter. It's a Saturday. It's just a Saturday. Mm -hmm. but, but I think it's important for children to take, too. Yes. The children so, as in teenagers. Right. Yeah, teenagers and boats are not a safe item sometimes. And um, and well, adults in boats and adults in uh, jet skis. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I, mean, I remember when we first got jet skis, we were all trying to splash each other, not knowing the dangerous we, the things we were in. Um, and so it's 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 very critical. Now, do y'all attach the kill switch and all that oh, to yeah. you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, I, I see these guys running these personal uh, um, vessels, mm -hmm. and in the the kill switch, the little red tags mm -hmm. jumping up and down in the water, and they got no clue whatsoever that if they fall off, and it, you can easily fall off one. Mm -hmm. uh, that jet ski can just keep right on going, and mm -hmm. it could do damage to somebody's vessel. Uh, and stuff like that, so that, it's all there. I do want to touch on one thing. Yeah. We just got back from uh, fishing in Kentucky, like, which was real windy, stormy, mm -hmm. um, but some of the other lakes, you see these big cabin cruisers and they're, they're at three-quarter throttle and they're, they're sitting at a 45 degree angle going through the water and they think it's manly or studly, I don't know which way you want to put it, <laughs> But they are throwing such a huge wake out there that they're causing damage, not only to boaters and, and ski, ski, uh, the sea dews and stuff like that, but erosion, erosion off of the off bank. the uh, bank, uh, and those are beginning to be concerns. Mm -hmm. And Bill, talk to us a little bit about that. It is. It's uh, it's quite dangerous. And as a vessel operator, you're responsible for that wake. Yes, sir. And he can damage people's docks that are on there, their boats tied up, as well as injure a person in the water. Uh, I've seen boats that were tied close to proximity to each other in a big wake, and they just bang, bang them up. And if you're in there or you're swimming near your boat in the wake, it could push your boat right over on top of you. Yes, sir. So it's, uh, I, do, I do really ask the uh, own operators of these big boats, would they slow down? Or even plane up, plane and get, up. up get on plane. plane and up. Get, stop plowing the water. Yeah, plane up and get on top. And, and yeah. you'd be surprised. That wake is about a third of what it would be oh, when yeah. they when they sit there and just cruise and, like that. And I watched the fishermen, and they're out there along the bank of the, where the river channel, and they're fishing that line, and they're not watching. And all of a sudden, they're on the bow of their boat. That's right. And, all, and I just wonder more aren't thrown out. And, and, and a lot of them are that they we don't are, know about. We don't hear about. We don't know about. Hey, we got to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk to you a little bit more about boating safety and what you could be doing right now to get your boat ready. So hurry back to more 
of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. All right, welcome back, everyone. This week's Pitch of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Garden Center. Hey, Joy and I went out there and saw Mike and Deborah, and they said, tell everybody, hello. Come on out there. If you've got a problem with your green thumb not being as green as you need it to be, they can fix that problem easily out there off of Eaton's Creek Road. All right, our first picture here is... Uh, I'm trying to understand if it is uh, Dixon County tailgate. I'm not sure. I've, I sent this picture in, but I got no description on it. I am so sorry, but hey, what a nice bass to show off anyway. That's a great, great fish. Our next picture here, uh, this is Bundy uh, Johnson and Mike Lilly from Springfield, Tennessee with two birds in the bag by 7 o'clock opening in the morning. As you can tell, those two right there, those are hardcore turkey thumpers right there. Now, they, those guys are serious. Our next one here, this is from Wes Sneed. The guy, one of the uh, Wes and Billy Sneed that owns Sneed products, says, Hugh, this is our little buddy. He has done it again. This is Mason Warner from Shelbyville, Tennessee. And Mason won the Heartland Tournament on Lake Normandy on April 13th. His big fish was 6.33 pounds and a five fish total weight of 21.40 pounds. Great job, Mason. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, Mason is 11 years old. So what a way to win, Mason. Start them off right, brother. This is, and, and for all you music enthusiasts, if you don't know who this guy is, this is R.D. Wayne, Rick L.D. Wayne. I mean, Rick L.D. Wayne. He is the, was the lead guitarist for Porter Wagner. He said, Hugh, I've been out there on uh, fishing with John Williams at Buchanan Resort on Kentucky Lake. And on April 16th, he took this six pound, two ounce smallmouth. I bet he was trying to crappie fish and just stumbled on this one, if truth were known. But Rick L.D. Wayne is awesome, is an awesome, awesome fisherman. And so is John Williams out there at Buckhannon. So uh, thank you for all those pictures. You can send more pictures to us here. Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219. Or simply email them to me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on here. And let me tell you something. Most of you are texting me these pictures, emailing, everything. Keep them coming. We're getting to them as fast as we can. Uh, we put on about four or five different pictures each week, and we're getting backlogged. But keep sending them because we love what we're seeing. And uh, just to say, uh, we've got on our show tonight, we have Bill Weeks. Bill Weeks is with the United States Coast Guard Auxiliary uh, Flotilla 1104. 1104. And right beside him is a good, good friend of mine, Bill Taylor. He is the uh, dentist over there. He just works on kids' teeth, too, don't you, Bill? Sure. Just children. And... Uh, uh, but he's a great, great dentist, and we really appreciate him. He's a great, great friend, and he's a great, great boater, too. I do want to take a moment to say uh, I got some real bad news this week. Uh, uh, I lost one of my really dear, dear closest friends, my hunting buddy, uh, uh, J.R. Gould. I, 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 what an awesome man. He's 60 years of age. Uh, he and his wife, Shirley, have been married for 40 years. Shirley, I actually grew up with uh, Shirley's uh, first cousins. They were my best friends when I was growing up in school. Uh, so here, I had to go 700 miles to meet her. Uh, but she was married to uh, my really good friend, J.R. Gould, and he passed away uh, Tuesday morning. He was going turkey hunting, and he died in his sleep. And uh, JR is probably knocking out some birds in heaven right as we speak, and uh, I hope I hope somebody's up there helping him field dress because he wasn't too good of a field dresser. <laughs> but but love you, JR. We're gonna miss you, brother. And uh, we, our thoughts and prayers are for the Ghoul family. That uh, they know all they have to do is pick up the phone and call me, and I'll be there. So uh, thank you for that. All right, we're back to. Uh, we're talking about boater safety and Bill Weeks with the Coast Guard Auxiliary, there is some things that they can be doing preparing for a check-in station. Can you just give us just a few little tidbits? Yeah, that they can be doing right now. Right now, well, make sure your fire extinguisher is fully charged, up to date. 
And make sure it's the right fire station. In the right, you want a. You have to have the right. You want a Coast Guard approved. That's right. For a, for a boat. For a marine vessel. For a marine vessel. Uh, a class A, B, and C, mm -hmm. or at least B and C mm -hmm. on it. Uh, have your life jackets, a life jacket for every person on the boat. And depending on the size, certain sizes would require a throwable, a type 4, right. like your cushion. And uh, make sure all, all the equipment is Coast Guard approved. You don't, don't buy it. And also, Bill, tell them, no tears. No tears. Now, now, I don't mean like a little bitty, like a hook tear. No. I'm talking about one that's that long or that long. Oh, yeah. Where, you, the, where, where the float can actually yeah, come out. Where the, yeah, where the flotation can work its way out. Uh, the If you use an inflatable, then you have to wear it for it to count as a life jacket on the boat. Please explain that. We've got fishermen okay. left and right that are going, hey, I'm, I've got my life jacket. Okay. Now, if you have... A type, a type three, just your usual life jacket. That's right. They count on the inside. They should have. So simply just check. You'll see the flotation aid type three That's size right. according to your size. You want mm -hmm. appropriate wear. Mm -hmm. This sits snugly and doesn't float over your head should you get in the water. The uh, these have to be on the boat. I would prefer you wore it. But it, it counts if it's in the boat. You bet. Now, if you have an inflatable, such as the suspender brand, if this is the only one you have in your boat, it has to be on you or it don't count. Okay. Now, <laughs> does that mean a manual pull or an automatic? Automatic or manual. So it's either or. Either or. But you have to wear it for it to count as a, as a flotation, flotation device while it's on. These are gaining some popularity. They're uncumbersome like this mm -hmm. they're cooler and now is that okay bill for a child to wear? no no i wanted they, to get that out there because right. a lot of them are doing be, it. yeah i know they don't even make them in children's sizes no so it'd be too large for a lot of children and i i wish uh i know it at least 16 and above six, maybe younger could wear them but no child under 12. no sure. child under 12. for sure so you can't have a manual or an automatic Personal flotation device, even if they wear it all the time, mm -hmm. can't be on a child. Can't be on a child. And these are, like it says, it even says on here, they're only approved when they're worn. Okay. Now, okay. if you want to take a step, another step toward comfort, it's a new little fanny pack. Yeah, I call them belly boats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just stick it belly around. Belly floats is what I'm saying. Stick it around your waist. Yeah. It's an automatic inflation. Right. It's water. It pops up. It does take, the, take a little more effort because you have to pull it over your head when you're in the water. So it's might be a good idea to practice these. See, now I didn't know that. I figured, you know, a guy like my size, I'm what you call consider top heavy. So if I had one of those belly and it just went around my belly, I'd be topsy over it anyway. You'd see my feet kicking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but my head would still be on the water. Right. <laughs> but far better than not having nothing. Oh yeah. Right. So oh, you, yeah. you do have some protection. You go in the water. And you'll have these. these well, uh, they don't can I say that I would suggest if you're going to be a stream fisherman, mm -hmm. especially oh, yeah. Caney Fort River oh, stream yeah. fishing, when you don't know how fast that water level can come up, those are great things to just have on you. Uh, carry your little tackle box on one side, carry your flotation on the other. Yeah. And then if you do get caught in that situation and knocked off your feet in yeah. the current, you're, you're still, you're still going to survive. Yeah, you're much safer. Much safer. Oh, and one other thing. Neither of these are approved for personal watercraft. You, okay, now you cannot, what now? You cannot wear these on a jet ski. You have to wear... You have to wear a Type 3. Bill, y'all all wore body gloves, right? What they call yeah, body gloves? Yeah, yeah. 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 Which is a Type 3. It's a That's vest, a Type 3. But these aren't, these aren't approved for any kind of personal watercraft. Do they sell a Type 1 or Type 2? When you're saying Type 3... That's that's pretty specific. People have to look for that, right? Right. That's just your your vest, and they make them like I say the body glove brand and okay. style, or these. But you want to go, you prefer go with a with a higher impact rating, of fifty miles or more. Okay. Because okay. you get thrown from those, you go hit the water. Oh yeah. Fairly. It's not like falling off a boat. Now, do you recommend those that have the the ones that come around your legs also that keep you from? 
Oh, uh, well, losing it? Well, that would certainly keep it from pulling off of you in a backward spin. Well, I've know. noticed that some of the personal right. flow, like Mustang, mm -hmm. uh, Body Glove, Body Glove even has a zipper on the back where you can unzip, and now the it comes around your legs and snaps in. So yeah. it's just more protection. More protection, keep it on you. What do you tell kids though? Here's my problem. I got grandbabies, Bill, and they're and, and mm -hmm. Bill, you can back me up yeah. too. You have the same problem. I don't want to wear my. This is hot. It's summertime. I'm hot. I don't want to wear it. Well, we got to go in. Is that my imitation of Lawson? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, well, I mean, you have the same problem, don't you, Bill? When you're out there, well, mine are. A little bit older now, but yeah, yeah. yeah but we used to when they were, they would, they'd find it, and you yeah. just had to say, "Is your option? Your options stay on the on the land or get in the boat? Get in the boat, you got to wear a life jacket." It, it's against the law. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it is it's the law. Like, it's like um, I mean, there's no choice. But you, do you hear it too? I've heard it. Yes, and uh, the one of the best ways to do it, you wear yours. That's right. Don't go without it. Do as I do, and not do as I don't do. do. <laughs> Do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. We, we, walk, we can live with that. Walk to walk. Talk, talk to talk. talk. All right. You're, wear it, and they'll more have to wear it than, than not. <laughs> All right. We got to go now, Bill and Bill, to do our product of the week. Southern Woods and Waters product of the week brought to you by Falquest. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And this week's product of the week is one that the Coast Guard highly pushes. But uh, Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency used to give these away. and you, I think some of them still do, but the Coast Guard does too. Yeah, we have them. They give them away. And if you go to one of those boater in inspections, you can ask for one and hopefully get one. That's a whistle. Now, I say that because a lot of people don't think about having a whistle. But I've done hunter safety and bow hunter education and fixing to take boater education. But I'm an avid, an avid fiend on you have to be safe while you're out there. Sometimes those electronic horns don't work. Uh, sometimes you can't, you've got your air horn in a compartment on a bass boat that you don't remember where you put it. But if you'll put this on your keychain of your boat, you'll always know where it is. And let me tell you something, one or two or three blasts with this thing, can can far exceed you being able to scream or holler and please learn the morris code sos <laughs> is a great thing to use with one of these whistles too three dots three dashes three dots uh so three quick bursts three longer bursts and then quick three more quick bursts is sos and so learn that youngsters everybody needs to know that uh that it's three dots three dashes three dots uh for sos in case you do get into trouble you are a whole lot better whistling than you are hollering. Hey, we got to take another break. And when we come on back, we're going to open up our phone lines at 737-7767 so you can be able to call in and ask your questions. We got all kinds of things going on. So hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Water. Mm -hmm. 